before you start the video, and in case you are wondering, here are the exact details of my score on the SAT. I got 1540, 790 in math, and 750 in English. In English, in the writing section, I got 360 out of 400. In the critical reading section, I got 390 out of 400. So it means I almost got perfect score in the math section, which is 790 out of 800, almost perfect score in the critical reading section, 390 out of 400. And I did a few mistakes in the writing section, 360 out of 400. Hi everyone. For those new to my channel, I'm Siam Shwed Noor, a rising senior Bangladeshi studying applied math at Harvard. This is a playlist about getting into top universities. After starting this playlist around 20 days back, I have received a lot of positive responses. I got over 50,000 views from nine countries and this playlist alone has brought me over 2,000 subscribers. Now I know these numbers are very little, however, they mean a lot to me. So thank you so much for the support. This video in particular is a video about one question that I got a lot after getting to Harvard and over the past three years is that how did I do so well on the SAT? If you want more videos like these on different topics and interviews with amazing students who get into top universities, smash, smash that like button. Please subscribe. The only fact that you are actually doing this is proof that my videos are doing well compared to previous performances. So please support me and I can bring you more content that would help you in your university admission journey. Yes, this video wasn't a clickbait. I got a 1540, which is a 99 percentile on the SAT on my first attempt in just two months of preparation. I did not use any paid resources except one, which is the SAT book by Princeton Review. The link to that book from different versions of different years, although there wouldn't be that much differences between the versions are in the descriptions below. The other resource that I mainly prioritized during my time was Khan Academy. It is the most important resource according to me. And I think that is what made the difference when it comes to my SAT journey. At the same time, since I came from a national curriculum background in Bangladesh, there were topics that I struggled with and I feel a lot of national curriculum students will face the same struggle. And there are some tricky topics in general. In each section, when I'm discussing the topics, I will talk about which are kind of like topics national curriculum students or students, international students in general might struggle with. So those are extra tips that you can utilize for a better performance. Let's start with the format of the SAT. It is scored in 1600 points, 800 math, 800 English. Among 800 math, you have two subsections, math with calculator, which is 38 questions in 55 minutes and math without calculator, which is 20 questions in 25 minutes. Both of these session, as I might've mentioned before, is 400 points each. Now let's talk about how you will plan your SAT journey. Step number one, go to Khan Academy, open an account. It is to be noted that Khan Academy is not paying me to do this video. In my SAT journey, I felt Khan Academy is the most important resource um, that you can use to get even a perfect score. And that is the only resource you would require in my opinion. The practice exams that Khan Academy offers are very accurate and representative of what you will actually see in the main exams. Khan Academy also breaks down topics into very, very attackable modules that you can approach one by one to master the skills that are tested in SAT. SAT really tests certain skills. So if you master those skills separately in Khan Academy, you can really do well on the uh, actual exam. When it comes to Khan Academy, you start your journey by taking a practice exam. You have to take it in an actual environment, which means that you have to take it timed in a quiet environment, maintaining the break, breaks they usually offer in the actual exam. After you take the practice exam, look back at which modules or type of questions that you did bad in, Khan Academy will divide them for you and the type of questions you did well in. Then you list down those modules from, from bad to good and then 
you look at how much time you have to prepare for the ACT in whole. If you have two to three months, think about how many modules you can tackle in each of those months and then plan out the number of practice exams you could take each week to tackle each of these modules. How I did it was I, I used to take a practice exam every week and I used to cover every single module that was in the entire SAT uh, Khan Academy kind of SAT section. And then I used to give the practice exam and repeat the procedure all over again. This was the plan I used. However, it might change and you, you might have time to relax a bit more if you have three or four months. But this was the strategy that I used. Here is the seven step general strategy I used to tackle the math section of the SAT. Number one, go to Khan Academy and go to the topic wise section of math. Number two, practice each topic individually prioritized by your performance on your past practice exam. Number three, practice until you get to four skill level of each topic, which Khan Academy will show which skill level you're on. Number four, try each topic at a four skill level without doing error, any errors. So five in a row of correct answers. Number five, always note down the mistakes you made and then learn the concepts. The exact concept will be tested on ACT and the exact concepts have to be mastered in Khan Academy for you to do well. Number six, always time yourself while doing so. And finally, number seven, learn the basic usage of a scientific calculator, which will be useful for your calculator section in math. These were the seven like steps I used to solve the math problems in SAT and the math section in general. This entire process should take you a few days. After a few days, start giving the mini overall math test and keep up the practice. By mini overall math test, I mean Suppose you have 20 questions in 25 minutes for the no calculator part. You can do that section only as your math practice. Try to not have any errors and instantly, the moment you do a mistake in a particular concept, master the concept by, may, by looking at the steps I mentioned just before. Once you master the concepts following those steps without any mistake, repeat the process all over again, and this should be enough for the math section. I will now talk about the different types of topics I struggle coming from a national curriculum. Chances are you will find yourself struggling in each of these topics as well. Number one, learn how graph shifts work and how the graph changes based on the changes in the equation. Number two, get a hang of circle formulas. Learn how degrees of a circle sector, for instance, can be used to find out the area or circumference of a circle. Number three, understand how a parabolic equation works and how you can convert it into its vertex form and what each variable in the equation means. Number four, know how standard deviation or mean are represented in a scatter plot or a graph and see what it means for the graph to have a low standard deviation or mean. Number five, Learn names of various data collection methods and know what they mean. And finally, number six, the basic linear and exponential growth functions should be learned and what they mean. A lot of these terms might not mean anything to you, it might seem difficult. However, when you practice Khan Academy just using the strategy I mentioned, you start to see what I'm talking about because the terms I use are the exact terms Khan Academy uses and then you will know what to do. Here's an extra tip that saved me a lot of points on the SAT. It might seem redundant and you might not do it or feel the need to. However, trust me, it saved me a lot of points and chances are it can do the same for you. Always understand and underline what the question wants. Focus on underline. Most of the math errors sometimes come from not a lack of knowledge, but are silly mistakes. Underlining the specific part of a question minimizes that. Here's an example, 2x plus 6 equal to 12, find out 3x plus 6. Our brain kind of is trained throughout high school to find x and not to find 3x plus 6. And the value, the exact value of x might be provided in the multiple choices. Actually, they will most certainly be provided. So our brain will do that mistake and circle that value when in reality we were asked to find out 3x plus 6 and not x. 
So in that case, what you have to do is underline what the question exactly asks, which is find out 3x plus 6. When you build the habit of underlining what a math question asks or what an English question asks, you will, you're less likely to do that mistake in my opinion. Thank you for making it this far. These are the exact tips and strategies I use. They're not perfect. However, they worked for me. This is particularly used for someone who has no idea on how to start practicing the ACT. And I hope this video will be useful for you. If you like this video and you want more resources like this, smash the like button, subscribe so our video can help more students and I can continue to make such videos for university admissions. And Important thing to note is that SAT isn't the only criteria of deciding your chance of admission into a university. So even if you have a very good score, if you have lackings in other areas, you might not get in. So it is important to not only focus on the SAT, but focus on everything else as well. If you want more topics that I should talk about, comment them below. If you want me to interview a student of a particular university, comment them down below. If you found this video useful, please share it with your friends who are also taking the SAT with you. It will mean a lot to them and I hope this video can really help them improve their SAT scores. Just to mention again, the links to the resources I used will be provided in the description. Do check them out below and I hope you found this video useful. See you next time.